back to the channel. We are in the Lund. First time putting it in the water. Uh, I've had it for like six days now and I just haven't got out. I actually got out carp fishing the other day and it was beautiful, but the weather's been kind of iffy. So for the first time that I wanted to get out, I wanted it to be nice and it is calm right now. So we're out here chasing crappies. We're gonna target some wood and uh, we have a couple basins that if they're not up super shallow yet, uh, they should be in the deep water, but water temps are 49 degrees. So that's, that's really good. Like they should honestly like be up spawning and if not already, some fish might be done spawning. So what we're gonna start with here, I got uh, Okuma rod, Okuma reel, light mono, going to a thill slip float and uh, we're gonna be fishing like two to three feet of water and then uh, right here we've got a small jig head with uh, dragon slayer plastic from frostbite so that should be doing the work we're gonna target some wood like I said to start we got some trees coming in the water so we're just gonna make our way into the back of this bay and hopefully find some big slabs I want to do a catch and cook uh, I got some catch and cook spicy left and I want to get this live well filled and slime all over this boat so that's the goal today with a backup plan for maybe gar or bowfin if we can find them in here. And uh, if not, I got some fake worm chicken byproduct kind of dealio. Um, I'll show that a little bit later that we might get into some catfish with, but I forgot the anchor at home. So we're gonna see what we're gonna do. Main, main goal today is crappies uh, with backup plans of uh, maybe some gar, bowfin, catfish. We'll see, but we're gonna get to it. We've fully tied up both our rods and we are right off the structure. So uh, let's see if we can get some slabs. It's great to have you guys out here today in the new boat. Let's get it done. Not a crappy, but we got the first catch of the year on the little dragon slayer. Just sunk that float. Nice little guy going back, not what we wanted. I thought we had an absolute slab on. Something had hit my bobber up against the tree maybe like five casts ago and then I kind of pulled it back out, he hit it, I didn't get a hook set in, I pulled it a couple more times and then like he sunk it. I thought we had a 14 inch crappie, but nope. On to the next tree. Something. I hope it's a crappie. Well, it's a fight for sure. Yeah, oh yeah? I don't know. That's a crappie. Oh, it is a crappie. It's a big one. Oh my God. Dude, dude, dude. Sick. Well, let's get it, dog. Yeah, <laughs> in crappy. here. That's a giant, bud. Trolling for crappy, dog. <laughs> he was, he was kind of out too, eh? Yep. This was letting it. Sick. Dude, we're keeping this. I'll, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna film my live. Well, I'll let you hold him. We'll get some footage. Atomic teaser. That's good to know. Hitting on a tube. We got a crappy, guys. Beauty on the atomic teaser. Quick trolling. Yeah. Vito was just like eating his lunch. Trolling the bobber behind the boat, and he's like, I got one. I was like, you think it's a crappie? He's like, I think it's a pike. Beauty crappie. First one of the day. On the line. Yeah, first one on the line. We're gonna put this puppy in the live well, see if we can get a couple in the live well. Yes. Fish number two. Finally, another crappie. We're kind of find, uh, we found where some were surfacing in there, and uh, Vito just missed one. Derby Slayer getting it done. Second one for the live well. Gonna get her in the box. I think we're figuring something out. They're pushed right up to shore here. And uh, we've had a couple floats go under in a short amount of time. So, there we go. Love these paper mouths. So good eating. In the box with his bud. See you later. Alligator, let's get another one. If there was no wind, we could cast side by side because our line would lay flat, you know? I see the fish. Is that a fish swimming? Yeah. Yo, that was a fish, man. I know. I don't know what that was. If that was a crappie, dude. That was very dark. That was, was a very... giant crappie if that was a crappie. Or a catfish or a crappie. Dude, it was giant. It was black. Very dark. Could tell. It couldn't have been a crappie. It had to have been a pike or a catfish or something. Cat. Oh, yeah. We're in a rock pile right the here. Cloud. There's a bunch of rocks here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We left the cloud there. Got one. Yes. We're figuring it out. Oh, I lost them. I horsed them. They are right up in there. He hit it as soon as it hit the water. Yeah, this they're right in front of this little thing here. I 
I only have this much line under my bobber. That's what it was, a crappy chasing. It was a crappy. Your bobber just moved. Yours? No, yours did, I think. I bet you that fish we saw was a crappy. It was the, the, tail the big was one swimming? So dark. I know. But it could have been. The big one. It was very, very big. I think it might have been like a 16 inch freaking crappy. <laughs> Come on, I know there's more in there. Maybe we should... Burr, missed them. No. That's okay, because if you miss them like that, like I didn't have them on, you know? Pulled my pants down though. Hey? Pulled my pants down. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Slab. This is a nice one. That's a biggie! Yes! Yes! Man! I love them! This is what we wanted! I've come here a few times, but I'm always so late in the year that I miss it. We are on them. That's like six bobbers down in a quick, quick succession. Like, we've missed a couple, but another beauty for the box. Yes! Beauty Black Crappy. They're just loving that Derby Slayer. Like, we're only using small leads right now. Maybe a foot of line out, small little plastics. Vito's got a small little atomic teaser on. We are getting on the crappies. Let's get this one in the box too. Yes. Let's go. And the good thing is, as long as we don't go in, like if we get snagged, we break it off and we just retie. Because I don't want to go in and scare the fish out of there. Right, right. But like, once we see it slowing down, we'll keep going up and we'll come back here. And like the fish that we might have spooked or hooked earlier yeah. might bite again, you right, know? Right. Mini slayers, guys. Chartreuse. If it ain't chartreuse, it ain't no use. It's not where I want to be. My float's just a little far out. Like, yeah, they're there, but... The last couple bites I've had have come closer to the shore than farther from the shore, so. I'll try the pink one. Like Pink's such a good color for crappies. That's where I want to be, for sure. <laughs> Got one. I called it, I was like, that is where I want to be. Feels like a good one. Andrew's on some fish on stuff. Yes, I made like a perfect cast. After knowing that my last cast was a little far out, I pitched it right back up in there and I didn't just get the words out of my mouth saying like, that's where I want to be. Oh. Tanker. Tanker. These are good like 12 inches. Derby Slayer again. Gonzo. Yeah. So sick. Today is a good day. In the Lund, maiden voyage, baby. Pulling slabs, paper mouth beauties, yes! Another one for the box, we're gonna have catch and cook! Okay, so these fish, we're finding them, like you can see all this like lay down back in there. There's a little bit of a creek system coming in. And I said when we worked up to it that the fish were probably gonna be like staging right in front because there's probably a little bit warmer water. And uh, with all this like debris and sticks that are coming into the water, it gives them a good spot to build their nests to make uh, the deed, make it all happen. So they're in here spawning if they haven't already spawned and uh, just looking for that structure to hold on and tighter to shore right now is better than like farther away pretty much the same depth all out here but they want to be up close to that wood and uh yeah floats are just going down over and over so we're gonna get back to fishing and hopefully be able to put a bunch more in the box for the catch and cook for supper baby let's get our way back in there they're really they're really like up there like i think they're gonna be from this tree in the water to about that rock i think it's too shallow in there I think it's probably like less than a foot. Not that they wouldn't be there, but I think they're going to be right at the surface of it. You can't wait. Like if it goes down, it's it's not a real minnow, so he could spit it fast. As soon as it goes down, you got to set. I wasn't sure. I was like, no, oh, you don't let it get dragged two, three feet. You got to hit it like when he hits it. Right. Like it goes down, your reaction should be to hit set the hook. So we did see a fish jump. Pretty tight to shore up here. 
And the last crappie after the first one that Vito caught, um, we saw fish chasing bait right up tight to shore. So it might have been a sign that there's some up in here. We will see. All right guys, so I just wanted to show you how I'm rigging up the floats and everything. There's a little bit of a system that they have here that you can buy with the floats. So these are, these are Northland Little Bite floats, but there's also like um, Thule or Thill, one of those. I'll put a picture of them below. They look exactly like this. You can get the ones with the clips on the bottom. I personally don't like those unless I'm fishing like all the time, one and a half to max two feet of water, but it makes it hard to cast when you have that big sectional line out and you want to get a good cast. So these slip floats make it so that your float goes down to like a split shot or a stopper that you have and then you can have less line out and make a longer cast so it's really simple to tie up you can buy these little they're like a knot on a piece of tubing comes with beads so you take out one of those little knots there oh no along with one of these small little pink beads right there between my fingers and I'm just going to show on a piece of line you take that knot that came in the tube you put your line through the tube like so so it's just kind of sitting on there and now all you do is slide that knot off of this tube down onto your line like so then you can take your tube right out of there now you're not sitting on your line so you tighten down both the tag ends like that onto your line now it can slide up and down freely on that line now that bead acts as a stopper for your float. So you slip that on there, like so. And then you got your float. I don't wanna put that line all the way through. This is by far, in my opinion, the best way to get a long cast. And you can put a lot of action into that bait by having this and not the clip float. Because every time you pull on the line, it actually moves your bait up and down, up and down. Where when you pull on the line on the ones with the clips, it just like kind of pulls the whole bait. Now I slip my float up there and that's like the stopping mechanism with the bead and the knot. Now the bait that was getting it done for me are the mini slayers from Frostbite, uh, the chartreuse. So I'm tying on my jig with whatever knot you want to do. So now you're just going to want to tie your jig on. These are like 1 8 ounce jigs. Now the actual shank of the hook is a little bit big for the slayer, so I take a little off, find out where my paddle tail is pointing. I'm sticking that on there, right up onto that protector. Now it's very important to have that bait vertical like that and not tied up so it's horizontal like this. This is far more realistic when it's vertical, or sorry, horizontal. And then everything can cast out. You only have, say, that much line when you cast. And then as it hits the water, this floats up. Boom, hits the stopper. Good to go. So that's what we're using. Fishing ultra shallow water. Pretty much all of our bites came in two feet of water or less. And uh, they are stacked up. We moved off the spot that we've had fish came to check in another corner because we feel like with the amount of fish we lost and the amount of fish that we did catch in that shallow water kind of pushed them off and if they are on beds they should go back and uh, we're going to return to that little bay shortly after we hit a couple trees here so let's get back to fishing Pew. That's a good perch. Yeah, man, got a good stomach on there. That is a good perch. As soon as we got the snacks out in the box, right on. I thought it was a crappie. Yum, fruit to go. <laughs> Let's go. All right, so we have not been seeing any fish. 
Uh, we came and did a little tour. There's like a bowl here and some deeper water and we drove around about five times around the bowl, marked some huge clouds of bait and uh, in about 18 feet of the 23 feet bowl, just before we hit the bottom, that bait was piling up and we were seeing some big hooks. So we set our slips to like 10 to 12 feet down and bob her down. Another nice little crappie, perfect size for an eater. I was kind of surprised that the bobber actually went down, but really nice fish here. A lot less colored up out in this deep colder water compared to in the shallows where they have those greens and blacks, but another one for the catch and cook. Thank you. In the bag. See you later. We're gonna get a little bit of a measurement at the end of the video, see what our biggest couple are. I'm sure we got some 12, 13s in there, but for right now, we're getting to the best time of the day. It's like five o'clock now. We've got two hours left. We're still gonna go back to the spot where we did have those fish, but uh, we might've just got something going out here in the deep water. So let's get back down there. I'm gonna start like out here like this. Alright guys, we came back to our little honey hole where we got all the fish and uh, they are not here. We saw a bowfin jump, but no crappies. So we're gonna move around, but I wanted to go and show the fish, see how big they are. We never got a measurement on them or anything. We did get one jumbo perch that was nice fatty, nine and a half incher, but a couple real nice slabs. One. Two. Oh yeah, 12 and a half. Yeah, 12 and a, 12 and 12 and a half. And we got another one, another big one in here. I think that's the biggest one. Almost 13 inch, 12 and three quarter inch. It's gonna make some good din-dins. Give a little show of them. So there we go, some beauties between 12 and 13 inch, absolute tankers. We got a few small ones as well that we're gonna keep like so. Nice little like eight inches and uh, we got a good meal. We have about eight, quiet down. We got about eight that we kept in a perch. Got a little bit of time left. We're gonna finish off this spot and uh, make our way to another spot we wanted to check out before it gets completely dark. And that's about it. So if we don't have any more fish, thanks for checking out this week's video, guys. Me and Vito had an awesome day. First day in the Lund. We still gotta get a name for her. So uh, leave some names down below. Give me your uh, opinion on what you think it should be called. I kinda like Raven because she's black. And I also like Shadow because uh, whoever's not following is just kinda in behind in the shadows, so. Don't forget, go down below, leave that comment, what should we name her, and uh, also hit that subscribe if you haven't subscribed. We still got bobbers in the water, that's why I keep looking back to see if we got a bobber down, but uh, nothing yet, so we're gonna continue fishing. If you don't see anything else, we didn't get anything else. So thanks again for checking out this week's video, guys. Till next week, back in the Lund, chasing something different, maybe some bowfin and some gar. See you guys then. <laughs>